of kids or family members today morning? Raise a hand. Okay, not many, but it's likely that 57% of you have used an IT system run by Clinton in the back end. Right? If you had milk in the morning, 62% of you had milk which is powered by a supply chain run by Clinton in the back end. Right? So what I'm really trying to say or articulate here is uh, we are the largest technology managed services company in the world with around $17 billion uh, services that we run. And anything you touch in your day life, somewhere there is a system in the back end which is built, managed or transformed uh, by, by your Kindle. Uh, so that's really the storyline and we are the leaders in the space with touching every user, every system which transforms the day to day life of how uh, people engage or how business really conduct. What we deliver today in the market is really mission critical for the nation's success, right? So from a banking standpoint, whether it is the NPCI platform uh, migration or transformation that has been rendered, or whether it is NSE who has built a very rugged residency framework to switch over in case of an outage, those systems are really built and managed by the company. And the latest uh, success we had is what we are doing at Bangalore International Airport uh, since uh, two years that we have taken over the operations to really transform and build observability pain to thereby deliver transformation and experience to the IT stack of operations. So that's really the trade of what we really uh, run as Kindle. Coming to airports, uh, from the drivers on the technology side of airports, from our point of view, we really believe to what Suresh just spoke about, uh, delivering experience. So one is, I think, four real simple things of what really airports does, right? Passengers in and out, baggage in and out, airplane in and out, and cargo in and out. But what goes behind to run that system is a mammoth ecosystem of facilities, integration, and ecosystem partners. And that is generating the experience to that particular passenger to drive from place A to place B. Second is about building a data strategy. Like what is important is that while you consume a platform to run business KPIs, the need of the R is to really build a data strategy in terms of who are the stewards of consuming the data, what should be the strategy to drive a data mesh and therefore drive better value to the business. So that becomes the second real driver so that there's better insights and business actions which an airport or a travel industry can really drive. From that strategy, you then derive the platform which can help you really go and consume the life cycle of the data. The next is I think what Suresh spoke about, but uh, really about an end-to-end -end seamless experience. It's digital and India is really at the forefront, the way we are really delivering that experience across the world. And actually a lot of people from global markets really aim and want to really understand what we are really driving in the marketplace with this size, like 140 crore population, what are we really driving? So with that experience of a seamless journey, which is what Digiata Foundation has got to the airports, on top of that, I think baggage, right? For example, when I uh, travel from Bangalore to Delhi and back, for me the experience is seamless. Across the gates or across the baggage systems, it's completely zero touch engagement. And that's really making my experience of travel much more enlightened and much more interesting uh, for me to experience uh, that value. I think the world is really moving away from integration in a, in a very traditional manner. And this is something which I think we should all understand in terms of how we really have to look at data and events. So an airport is a mesh of events today, right? You're, you're generating trillions of data, data events which is really going to give meaningful insights for a business, for an application on user to really drive. And this is a big change that we need to look at as airport, airport ecosystem partners and as airports to see that how do we shift from traditional and conventional integration modules to actually an event mesh. And that is something which we really be, and we'll talk about this in the latest slide. And last is about decoupling away from a DCS integration. What really the Digiata did? And probably is there a way that you can now decouple from the airline DCS and thereby create an ecosystem integration on the back end so that as and when multiple systems is derived in the airport environment, you actually decouple both of them and you have a very seamless integration experience, one on the airlines, second on the airport ecosystem. And that's a big mantra of making it very seamless for all of us to drive transformation in the airports. So this I believe is really the top uh, four or five trends that we should look at from an airport modernization standpoint.
Now coming to the, and I'll talk about three uh, really in depth and see how uh, I can take some questions on this. One is on the data strategy. At the center is kind of building a functional dimension and defining what should be the data credibility and authority be. That's the starting point. So in this you really go and decide what should be your strategy be for data. What will you do for data? How do you then consume the data? This is your starting point. Once you define the data credibility and authority, then you get into the strategy of building an ecosystem channel. Who are the consumers of the data? What is your organization structure to go and consume the data? How do you do uh, life cycle management of the data? So I think that is the second part of building the uh, data strategy. The third is really about operations maintenance. And this is the really the third really part of ensuring that you have a continuity of really driving data life cycle management lineage. How do you really track and trace the data origin to the data end consumer? How do you define the stewardships of who does what in a data life cycle? Data scientists, data architects, uh, data stewards, how do you define that? And last is platform. Unfortunately, we all start with platform first. But I think this is the first three elements of the system because of the ecosystem that needs to be thought through so that you then go and build a very robust platform which can meet the first three objectives and thereby have a very meaningful outcome for your business. Right? And the platform really has there are multiple technologies. You use cloud native, cloud tech, you define what the integration strategy should be and thereby define the next steps. In terms of the strategy, the operation is very important. Do you have an executive sponsorship right from the top? Because data is your new product, especially when it comes to airports, you are going to churn multiple elements and events with that data being a product, how do you really monetize the data as step number one? Number two, what is your executive chain of command to really manage the life cycle of the data, uh, data set? And then what is the layer of organization below it to actually control the life cycle of the data? So these are the elements that you really need to think through from executive management. The next is about with that journey, you then have to define the objective statements. What do you now do with data? Where are you today in the life cycle of that system? What are the trends? What are the benefits? And then you apply the domain knowledge. For example, really we come with a very strong uh, capital markets, BFSI and that kind of domain. The storyline is largely the same. You take the logic of how do you do the millions of transactions of data, convert that into an airport ecosystem and thereby deliver implementation steps and strategy to then create a platform to consume that in a much efficient manner which makes meaningful sense to, uh, to the business. Uh, slightly a busy slide here, but I will really talk about this as a reference architecture that we have built uh, for airports. Data is available in structured, unstructured, semi-structured and real-time uh, set. And this is about multiple sources, whether it's the airport operation DB, whether it's a score slot, uh, slot coordination system, whether it is your uh, FITS uh, systems, passenger information, you have the digital information in terms of performance of uh, uh, success rate, failure rate, consumption, adoption, which the airport needs to report. All of those elements of data is your source data. With that source data, how do you now go and curate into a data layer in which you actually go and use that churn of data, transform it and consume it better with uh, a processing and a transformation layer. In the next stage, you really go and then think about how do you define visual KPIs? How do you create a meaningful report? And there are multiple stakeholders uh, in the ecosystem. It is a CXO, the CFO has a different perspective. Uh, the operations, uh, terminal operations have a different lens that you want to see. How do you create that different visualization layers so that each of the business stakeholders really can consume that data to make actionable insights for the business? Outcome being clearly about efficiency in operation, a passenger experience or cost efficiency. One of these three parameters is a meaningful actionable insight that you can derive from this platform. The most important part is about governance. Hello? How do you really create a governance layer to really ensure Hello? that data quality sets, data uh -huh. lineage and those elements uh -huh. which are important for the reputation of the airport or the entity who is managing the data is secure in an adequate way so that you actually consume this data more efficiently for your business. And, and, and the last is about how do you really put a platform management structure 
in line with different airports will have or different entities will have different uh, security framework and guidance. How do you really align to that security framework and guidance of the airports? How do you align it with the regulator's need? How do you then churn multiple sources? Like Suresh spoke about the transformation of how passenger experience will evolve, which means there will be new trends and new technology intervention that regulators will try. How does the platform now be ready to adopt, to integrate that life cycle change? And that's really the storyline of how we believe that a data platform, data strategy and data framework needs to be rebuilt for an organization and an enterprise. With this knowledge, one is the visualization and actual insight, but the world is now going towards chat GPT. I was on a, a plane, my travel from Bangalore to Delhi and I had uh, one of the co-passengers next door. She was talking about, uh, she's a, she works for a VC and they are extensively using chat GPT for content creation, for video and for really marketing. So today can I tell chat GPT to write a code for me? Yes, it can. So how do you now use this data set to actually go and do AI and actions? and thereby look at new use cases to transform the way automation and autonomous or self-learning airports will really run. And that is the journey of how a platform can be ready for the future to go and subscribe and prescribe for more value-driven outcomes rather than being a legacy of information sharing and visualization. That's really where we think that the data strategy platform should be seen from a, uh, from a, uh, from a platform standpoint. This is a very interesting topic and I really want to speak about this from an event architecture. And what is really happening is that there has been a legacy way of how things have run. An airport is really a subset of ecosystem integration. Nothing but a facility which integrates and facilitates a passenger travel or a cargo travel. This means that there is going to be continuous evolution of events continuous evolution of data and continuous uh, evolution of integration cells. In the early days, which 10 to 15 years back, SOA and MQ architecture really made sense. 10 to 15 years back. It was conceptualized in 1999, if Anderson is right. But we are still running on the same platform, the same mechanism. How do you move from an SOA based framework to an event driven architecture? And I think Suri spoke about API from me. How do you now move from there to actually going and driving an event architecture? Can you go and take each of these subsets of transactions, call it an event, and only the subscribers of that event are consuming that data set? So integration becomes very, very seamless. You are avoiding any kind of mechanisms of a balloony of integration subsets to manage codes, manage integrations, and thereby run operations. One flight information doesn't come on time. The entire chain of cycle, either through a file or a queue, fails. Right? How do you change that paradigm of now integrating systems together? And that's where we call as an event mesh. This is the future of how airports really should look at. Look at everything from a segment of an event, uh, a flight landing, a life cycle of a plane, a passenger coming in, a life cycle of a passenger. Uh, in terms of applications who are actually going and using, or systems who are consuming uh, loyalty, retail services, all of them should be seen as an event. This event then has subscribers who on demand will consume them based on a business logic. You don't need, need, need to really build a business logic of a file and a queue in the traditional world. And this is the future of how you really be able to tap into a source of event and thereby transcribe that to an event based architecture. And this is what we really want to call as an airport information broker or a pub sub architecture where you have this multiple sources of integration data and it will just reside onto one single event broker. And this event broker will only exchange information and the consumer, which is one of the other categories, will only consume that data. So today, unfortunately, what's happening, every time you get a new system, you integrate either with AODB, you integrate either with the data link platform and you create multiple chains of integration. And then you need somebody to manage those integrations. Then you need somebody to maintain those integrations. If there's an upgrade, you need to look at the entire life cycle of the change. So you're not isolating the source and the engine from each other. And that's really what we want to call as an event-driven framework, whereby you create an event mesh to create a logic of event architectures. And this is what we feel the future of how airports will operate to modernize. The next is about uh, an interesting, which is what we learned in, uh, in our experience now, is, uh, and this largely works in large enterprises, is about service integration management. 
And in an enterprise fight kind of layout, an example, you have partners who run one IT, you have a different set of partners who run something else. How do you really now integrate all of them to one service path? And a service path can be really defined as a journey of a plane, a journey of a passenger, and those kind of elements. How do you not track the life cycle of that? And that's what we want to call really as a service integration. So the airport is really an ecosystem, like I said, of of service providers. Right? All that you are doing as an airport is providing a facility and a platform to integrate service providers to be conducive for business, with the objective being that the passenger or the cargo travels and reaches in time. So with this, you need to have first the goal of what the business objective is laid. Then you create a governance layer, and the world is moving away from SLAs to XLAs experiences. So how do you move away from a governance model and thereby create operational level agreements? For example, there is a partner who delivers IT services, there is a partner who delivers passenger processing, there is a partner who delivers baggage systems. But if something fails, then how do you now resolve quickly? And that's the, the role of a service integrator. So can the airport play a role or can a large IT ecosystem partner play the role? And you integrate all the services into one single source of truth. And with that, we feel technology including AI ops, uh, AI led operations to deliver an outcome which is modern operations can really help with process integration having a single source of truth so that when something fails, the ability to recover fast and recover in time is made more real on the ground. So this we believe makes absolute sense from an airport standpoint because in a normal enterprise, everything is forward. An airport is not forward, it's a city. How do you not deliver service integration in the city? And that's a big challenge that we really want to embrace uh, ourselves for. This is a new IP that we as a company has created called as uh, Kindle Bridge. And this is a worldwide rollout. This is about how do you continuously create an observability plane. Uh, I spoke about the service integration layer about delivering a service life cycle. Now, can I now know if something fails in the environment of an airport? Where is the problem? Can I go and isolate that problem and then create actions through a layer of automation or a layer of engineering to troubleshoot, fix with a fast attack? And that's where we really think Kindle Bridge will play a role. It is nothing as the name suggests integrating and delivering a bridge of platforms. It actually correlates all the information, builds a single pane of glass to deliver a unified delivery across any other platform that you choose, whether it is data center operations, application integration, uh, platforms, and deliver a single outcome to you with correlation engine in the bottom, with technologies in the back stack, and thereby deliver a single pane to deliver a business outcome. And that's Kindle Bridge for you. So that's really what I had. Uh, in closing, uh, before I take some questions, uh, Kindle, most companies would not know, but uh, at Epitome it is, uh, KIN stands for kingship. Uh, drill is derived from Kindle, which is driving growth. So we are here to ensure that there is kingship and growth for airports as we modernize for the future. Thank you.